Here we go, High Impact Low Brass. Daily tip number 27. Today we're gonna go to exercise number two out of our warm-up routine. That's gonna be our tonguing exercise series. So we're gonna maintain the same Remington setup that we did yesterday on the long tones. So we're gonna start on F, E natural, F, E flat, F, D, back and forth until we get to low B flat. We're also gonna maintain the same rule where we're gonna do one set per breath. So we'll play F notes on one breath, We'll stop, analyze, think, and then move through. Now we're gonna be doing four quarter notes or four beats and then a held note at the end for our tonguing. So it'll be one, two, three, four, hold. We're then gonna move to subdivisions of those same four beats. So we're gonna do quarter notes first, one, two, three, four, hold. Then we're gonna move to eighth notes, then triplets and sixteenths. So eighth notes, one and two and three and four and hold. Triplets, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly, hold. Sixteenths, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a, hold. So for each of these, you're gonna make sure that we're tonguing the same, our sound quality needs to be the same, and that held note at the end is there for you to hear, in essence, a long tone at the end. It's gonna give you some perspective, a little bit of checks and balances, for a chance for you to really ask yourself, does the way I sound when I'm doing the tonguing sound identical and the same as what I am doing on my long tone? If you feel like you open up more on that long tone at the end, it's telling you you need to be better about opening up and using your air for the tongue notes. So, Couple other items to consider. Number one, it's been in a previous daily tip video that we've talked about, but I want you to make sure you're using those da attacks. The tip of your tongue is gonna strike right where your teeth and gums meet on the top side of your mouth. You're gonna make sure you're not sliding too far back onto the roof of your mouth. You're also gonna make sure you're not sliding too far forward and tonguing between your teeth with a ta syllable. So make sure we're using da. Again, the reasons are for good strong attack, not interrupting the air, allowing it to still flow through, but still giving us the clarity we want. Now, when it comes to tonguing, I want each and every note to be identical. I don't want them to be different based on how fast or slow they are. A couple other things. I want you to think of this still as if you're playing as kind of like a loaf of bread. You can cut that loaf of bread into as many slices as you want, but it's still together one loaf of bread. Your sound is one way. We think one way, we play one way. You have one sound quality regardless of, this, of how many pieces you break that sound up into. So you shouldn't sound tighter or more closed or different on 16th notes just because there's more slices of that bread than you would on quarter notes. So be very careful of that as we go. Things I want you to focus on for tempo are gonna be a nice, slow, and relaxed tempo, right around one, two, three, four, hold. That tempo is gonna be the same on quarters, eighths, triplets, and sixteenths. Now, once we reach the end of our last sixteenth pattern, we will then start to speed up just on sixteenths to push our tonguing speed, but everything else is focused not on how fast we can go, but how perfectly and how evenly we can tongue our notes. One other thing I want you to keep in mind is your breathing. For those of us that are at a higher level or more comfortable with this, the level of playing you're at now, you're gonna do all of this in one single breath. Now, the key is going to be sounding your best. So if you need a breath or if you take a breath, you'll sound better. I expect you to take a breath in the middle. So sometimes you may take a breath after beat three. That's gonna probably be the most common place to breathe. Other times you might actually need to breathe after beat two and again after beat four. So you can either have one, two or more breaths in these series. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate that in a second, but make sure that you're breathing so that the playing coming out of your horn is absolute precision and perfection. So I'm gonna do a couple of these with you guys. Ask questions if you need them. Here we go. So quarter notes on an F. Now, same thing on our long tones. I'm gonna to stop, analyze, think about what I wanted. So, I noticed that my third attack on that series was very mushy, was not as strong as they should have been. So, I'm gonna fix that as I go to the next one. Other things I wanna make sure that, no, but I didn't do it, but I also wanna make sure you're not doing it, is no pulsing, no moving to help you keep the beat, and also no changes or swells in the sound. It needs to be one consistent sound quality. So, here we go. E natural, I'm gonna to tongue harder on that third beat, making sure I hold still and really blow through. Now, I ran out of air on the held note at the end. That's okay. I played as long as I could with a great sound, and then I was done. So my held note was very quick. What I liked is that the sound was cons consistent throughout, and then if I just run out of air, so be it. So this time, I'm gonna take a breath after beat three to make sure that I have a ton of air. I can use more of it in the beginning, and I'll have a fresh breath to get me all the way through the end. So here we go, I'm gonna go back up to F. So 
it's just making my life a little bit easier. Now I can push to beat four or the end or continuing to breathe on beat three. The other thing I want you to also keep in mind is that you can also move your breath around. I might need a breath on beat three for quarter notes and beat two for triplets. You're not playing by the same rules. I want each individual subdivision the same. So quarter notes need to breathe all in the same place. But quarters to triplets might be different. So keep that in mind. The goal of this is to play your best. We're breaking this down into its most fundamental piece. So you need to be perfect on what we're doing. All right, so let's jump over to a set of triplets. All right, here we go. On an F again. <laughs> So I noticed on that one that I felt like the sound quality on the held note at the end opened up a little bit more. So I wasn't open and I wasn't moving as much air as I could have been on my tongue. So here I'm gonna adjust. This time I'm gonna go down to a D flat. previous set I hadn't taken a breath. That time I chose to breathe, I felt it was going to help me out. It was great. So now I know that for the next little while, it could be a couple days, could be a week, could be a month. I'm going to need that breath on beat three to make sure I'm playing my true best quality sound. So now let's jump ahead to 16th. I'm going to do a set at the regular tempo and then we're going to talk about pushing the tempo up. <laughs> Everything's moving well, I'm feeling comfortable. So after I do, I would have done this full set of 16th, then we're gonna start pushing our tempo. So what I want you to do is you can use a metronome to give yourself a tempo you want, or I actually prefer that you just generally click yourself off. I don't want you chasing a tempo and kind of mentally setting that cap on where you can be. I want you to just generally be able to click your fingers faster and figure out what tempo it turns out you were at later on. So here we go. Two things I want you to focus on when we speed up, we'll do this in a separate video as well, but connect your notes, notes the faster we go, the faster we go, the more we connect, and also make sure we're focusing on one sound quality, a lot of air moving, don't get distracted by all the notes, they'll take care of themselves. Here we go. So, I like the consistency, the air sounds good, the tongued openness of the sound quality on the notes sounded almost the same as the held note at the end. I felt like I still opened up just a hair, so I'd work on that, and I'd push this tempo. For tonguing speed, we'll talk about it separately again, but I do want you to really push this quicker as, as much as you can, so that the goal being that either you don't need to use multiple tonguing as much, or when you do, it's a choice that you're making, not a must do because you simply can't tongue faster. So try these different exercises out, ask us questions if you've got any, and I'll see you tomorrow.